I'm going to tell you kind of the big picture, most important things you need to know about drilling and completing oil and gas wells, and of course, what that is. So this is a picture of you've got a drilling rig here. That means that it has drilling um, actually going on on this site. Um, this will go away when you are just to the producing uh, part of the process. Another thing to point out here, you can also see a flare. This is where they are not capturing the natural gas that is probably associated with some of the oil that is already being produced from a nearby well. There could be other wells here. Um, that means that they are burning that natural gas uh, instead of just venting it, but they're not capturing it for market. So one of the things we're going to talk about is some of the impacts of natural gas venting or flaring associated with our oil production. Okay, so last time we talked about exploration, a little bit about permitting and leasing, how the United States is unique on that. Now we're gonna talk about drilling and completing. So how do we actually get the oil and gas out of the ground? The way that we do this has really progressed over time. Originally, we were really doing a lot of what's just called vertical drilling. You can imagine that our earth is layers and our reservoirs are also in horizontal layers. And we were just drilling down to get to the reservoir um, and only accessing a pretty small piece of that reservoir through vertical drilling. The next stage of, of advancement came with directional drilling. This was really came as an advancement for offshore drilling, because you can imagine that it was hard to have multiple drilling rigs in a single area. So if you could do directional drilling from a single rig, you could access a lot more of the reservoir. And then the advancement that we're really making use of today is actually horizontal drilling. And so what that allows us to do is we can drill down to the reservoir and then drill horizontally within the reservoir. And then you're really contacting a lot of that reservoir. And it can then have a single well can access much more of the reservoir. So you get much more production out of a single well than we used to with just vertical drilling. To give you a sense of scale, the, how deep we're going down into these reservoirs. I show a big range, but really a lot of the drilling is somewhere around 8,000 feet into the ground. And then with today's horizontal drilling, they can go for miles underground um, and really have a long contact with the reservoir. So what does it look like for drilling? Um, I'm here showing you kind of like all of the information for a modern drilling rig and all of the equipment. The big things to really think about is this is what you are typically thinking about an oil derrick, right? That is for drilling the hole in the ground. We do this for water in a smaller scale, do it in a much larger scale for oil and gas because we're going deeper and further. And if you're thinking about it, you have a drill, which I'm showing pictured here. This is a typical drill. It's called a, a tricone bit. These pieces turn as you're pushing it down into the rock um, and really grind up that rock as we're drilling the hole. Uh, this type of drilling um, bit was invented by Howard Hughes. So maybe you've heard of that name. That's where he really got uh, a lot of his wealth was from the invention of the modern drill bit. These are very, very heavy. And you can see this picture down here. They're very large, um, depending on how big the oil well is that you're building. So um, can be very large. And of course, they get ground down. So you do have to rotate out the drill bit. It's called tripping the bit, depending on how deep and how far you're going in the drill. These are heavy because you want to be pushing on the rock. If you're pushing on the rock, it helps you grind it up easier. And you're also feeding in steel, like huge steel pipes down the well. And that's also putting a lot of weight onto the drill bit in order to keep it drilling into the, the hard rock that it's going through. You can see in this picture drilling mud. This is a really important part of drilling. The drilling mud is doing a lot of different things, but some key things it's doing is it keeps the drill bit from overheating. Um, so it's really just a special formulated mud and water mixture that you're running through the drill bit and then back up the sides of the well. It also brings up all those little pieces of rock that you're creating at the time, brings them back up to the surface so they're not accumulating down in your well because you're obviously breaking up that rock. And it allows people that are like geologists to look at the rock that's coming up so you really know where you are, what layer you're in when you're drilling because that mud is circulating through the system. It also helps coat the sides of the well and kind of keep everything in place and keep pressure down on that reservoir. You've also got those steel pipes. You obviously don't want 
oil or gas to start coming back up while you're drilling. And so this helps keep some of that downward pressure on that oil and gas, which is under pressure because it's underground. So what do our casings look like? A casing is what we're putting around the well as we're drilling it. And what we do is we do a concentric uh, well that gets smaller and smaller as you go underground. And so the surface is gonna be a much bigger hole and you slowly go down to smaller and smaller sizes as you get deeper into the, into the ground. So I'm trying to show you this pictorially and you can see these, all these little things, these are a Statue of Liberties to kind of give you a sense of scale of how deep we're going underground and how deep these casings go down underground. What you're trying to do with these casings is really keep the oil and gas from contaminating groundwater. And so with a good modern casing, um, like we see today, you really shouldn't have any oil and gas getting into groundwater, which is relatively close to the surface compared to where we're going for the oil and gas way down deep. Now, some of the older wells, or if this isn't done well, you can actually get oil or, or usually gas coming up beside the casing into the groundwater. And so it is really important to do this process well so that you don't get like natural gas coming into our, our groundwater systems. Okay, another big important piece of equipment that we didn't have in the old days, which we have now is something called a blowout preventer. So a blowout preventer, there are many different kinds. Usually you have more than one when you're doing the, the oil drilling and then getting ready for oil production. This is really to keep a blowout from happening. So as I said, that oil and gas is under pressure. It's been squished under the ground. It's got water under it. It's under pressure under the ground. And you don't want it coming back up in an uncontrolled manner, which is how we did it in the early days before we had this kind of equipment. Nowadays, it's, it's pretty rare to have oil and gas coming out of the ground in an uncontrolled manner because we have these safety systems like blowout preventers. Okay, so we've drilled the hole. We've gone through the reservoir. We've put all of this steel pipe down there. So we take the drill back up and we feed that steel pipe back into the well. The steel pipe stays in the well. Um, inside the casing. And then we've got to put holes in our steel casing in order to connect the reservoir to the well so that the oil and gas can flow through. And so we do this, um, it's called, you know, a perforating uh, gun. Um, it actually is like little charges of explosions that you set off and actually poke holes in that steel casing in order for the oil and gas to flow from the reservoir up the well, and then we can start producing it. Now, that happens naturally if you have a traditional reservoir, a conventional reservoir with good permeability. You've probably heard by now about hydraulic fracturing. And so hydraulic fracturing is really a way to create permeability in rock where it doesn't really exist. And that permeability is needed in order for the rock to have little channels that the oil and gas can flow to the well and then come up the well. And so hydraulic fracturing is used in places where there is tight reservoirs. In other words, places where we can create this artificial permeability. So what we're doing in this case is after we've done all those steps, we put the holes in the steel casing, but no oil and gas is going to flow because the rock is really not permeable. We then put down water. It's really a lot of water under pressure, some surfactants or soaps and something called propent, which you can think about as just like sand. We used to use sand, but now we use kind of plastic sand, but it's different sized sand pieces that will then go into the rock and hold those little cracks open. So we put a lot of pressure on this water to create these cracks in the rock um, to create that permeability. And then as the oil and gas flow out, they kind of push the water back out. And so we have water that comes out and then the oil and gas can start to flow from the reservoir. One of the things that came up when we started doing um, hydraulic fracturing at a huge scale with horizontal drilling and these unconventional reservoirs in the United States, we started seeing earthquakes in Oklahoma. So those earthquakes weren't from the hydraulic fracturing themselves, it was actually from the increase in production of oil and gas. A lot of times when you produce oil and gas, you also get old ancient water. It's like crummy water that's been down there with the oil and gas. And you have to do something with that water. What we usually do is we re-inject it into the ground somewhere else, somewhere where it's not a reservoir. 
And so with this increase in production of oil and gas in Oklahoma, we were also increasing the amount of produced water we were putting into the ground. And that produced water then lubricated some faults that we didn't know about and caused earthquakes. So it was related, but not because of the hydraulic fracturing itself. I'll end there. Thank you guys.